I just spent two days in Super Nintendo World, one day at Disneyland, and today I'm back at Universal Studios Hollywood. Let's head into the park. But before even heading into the park, we need to check out everything that's going on at Universal City Walk Hollywood. So let's pop over there. And here we are for the last time in front of the Twosome Chocolate Emporium and Savory Feast Kitchen to look at some updates before opening. And this restaurant is ready to open. They've been doing mock service for the past couple days, and this restaurant is great. I've heard great reviews from people who've been there. It's actually going to be opening on January 27th, which is the opening day of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway at Disneyland. A couple things to note is one out front of the restaurant, the TVs have been turned on some B mode where they're turned pink. Off to the left side, you can see some things that have been added inside the restaurant restaurant, notably some screens and then some decorations. And on the right side, we have a more fleshed out gift shop. I will definitely be checking that out as soon as the restaurant soft opens or opens. Now, later in the day, while I was leaving the park, Universal Marketing was doing a photo and video shoot outside of Tootsome Chocolate Emporium, and we got our first look at Tootsome himself, the British speaking robot that's the mascot for the restaurant. He looks and sounds fantastic. Now, right behind Tootsome Chocolate Emporium and Savory Feast Kitchen is Samba Brazilian Steakhouse, or what formerly used to be that. It is just one of several restaurants that are notably closed in Universal City Walk Hollywood, and I hope that they're able to reopen these soon because they're gonna have a lot more people coming to the park now that Super Nintendo World's about to open. And now let's head in the park. And here we are, the first ones in the park. You can see just how many people are here, but we are here first. And this is a new procedure for the lower lot. They're holding us here by the escalators and stairs. And even coming off the third star way, every single team member is walking at the exact same pace. So everyone will get down to Super Nintendo World at the exact same time. And this is the coolest thing. I am going to be the first one heading into Super Nintendo World today. This is pretty great. Let's do it. And this is something you will never see is a completely empty Super Nintendo World. Hello. I just want you guys to take this in to see everything. We have key challenges on the left and right side. This is a character meet and greet, as is right over here. We have Mario Kart right in front of us, the Bowser Jr. challenge, and then we have another key challenge over here. We're going to show you everything in the land. It looks like we are going to be some of the first people on the attraction today. So this is the VIP line for the attraction. Unfortunately, this attraction is not opening with Universal Express. The first half of this attraction queue is themed to Yoshi Island. And this is because we are not getting the Yoshi attraction here. Then we walk out front and get this incredible view of Super Nintendo World. Now heading into Bowser's Castle, there's a couple different rooms that we go in. The first here is just a hallway, and this is the challenge of Bowser's challenge. That's what he challenges Mario to. Now we enter his library, and there's a lot of fun book gags. I posted some of these on Twitter. But now we're heading into Bowser's private dungeon, and we are going straight into the pre-show. And here is the loading station here. I have a full video up on the channel, so I'm not going to show you the attraction. I'm going to try and enjoy it myself, but I will see you guys on the other side. So just leaving the attraction, there was nobody in line, so I got to do it twice. I don't think I'm ever going to see that again on this attraction for a long time. But because I got to do it twice, I got 2,000 coins. So I am currently ranked number one in this land in the coins. I don't think I'll see that for a while either. Okay, so we just did Mario Kart. Now to the right is one of the key challenges. You have to earn three keys to beat Bowser Jr. Now we're leaving the Thwomp Challenge. We're going to get two more keys to head over to the Bowser Jr. Challenge. And I found out how to do this one yesterday. So because there's no line, I'm going to head and do that one. So the way that this game works is you have to hit this pow. So it goes in sequence. So this one goes up and has a green shell pop up and hit the pow box. And that's how you get the key. Oh, I got the easy one. That's nice. Because I can do that. Yeah, I know how to do the easy one. It looks like the Goomba challenge here is a bit of a wait, but that one to me is a lot easier than the Piranha Plant one. So I'm going to do this one. And basically here, you just have to spin really, really hard to make the Goomba fall backwards and then make the key available to you. And just while we're in line here, I'll show off. We have a gazebo over here. This is supposed to be for meet and greets. As you can see on the inside, it's not quite finished yet. Next to that is the entrance to the land or Peach's Castle. And then we have an interactive area in the corner. And in here, there's just a lot of boxes that you can hit and get your coins. So all you have to do is hit the bottom here and you can get coins. And that is this first room. And then right next to it is another room with more POW boxes. So that is this room right over here. 
Now looking over here, we have one more question mark block. And leaving this hallway, you exit underneath these mountains, which of course are right next to Peach's Castle. Now to the left of this is the Piranha Plant Challenge. And the way that this works is you have a bunch of alarm bells that you have to hit in time in order to have them not go off and wake the sleeping piranha plant. To the right of that is where you can get your power up, Ben. You do need these to really experience the land. Well, you can hit the question mark blocks. You don't really get points for that. So next to the power up, Ben, pick up over here is the warp pipe exit of the land. Here is that challenge that we did earlier. And right over here is the Bowser Jr. challenge. Let's check this one out. So what I do is I scan here and it lets me know that I got all three. And now I have to go in and challenge Bowser there's a couple fun effects in here that I love. One is this Bowser box where when you hit it, it blows air at you. There's another one right over here where if you tap your band, it lights up and glows. And then we pop in over here and we have the pre-show. Now we've explored a lot of the stuff down here. We haven't even explored half of it because there's also a second level. Yeah, there's a second level here and I'm not just counting the level for the attraction. So heading up these stairs here, you get to a separate level here. Here, there are also some more boxes that you can hit. And what's fun is there's a little Koopa over here walking back and forth. That's pretty neat. And here is our view out into the land. I mean, this is just beautiful, isn't it? Also through here are binoculars where you can see characters in the land that aren't really there. It's really cool. So on this side of the land is the 1UP factory. I think I need to do Mario Kart just one more time to show you guys that. Mario and Luigi. Hey, Mario. Hey, Luigi. Can I have a high five? Woo. So leaving the attraction, I have something to tell you guys. But first, I'm going to show you around the 7UP factory shop, which doesn't really have any new merchandise in it. But this shop is great. And you exit, of course, through a warp pipe. So the crazy thing is, I just did that attraction five times in a row without getting off. There was just nobody in line, so they just let me keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And I ended up getting my highest score was 179, which was the second highest score of the day. I am still ranked number two in the land. Uh, so hopefully I can hang on to that for a little while longer. Regardless, I definitely want to get some food right now. So let's head into Toadstool Cafe. It's crazy seeing this be built and now saying, oh, we're standing in it. Now we're going to head into the restaurant. There is a queue, but this is so cute. First, it shows you everything on the menu here. And there's lots of fun looking stuff. You can check that all on the Universal Studios app. But we have Talking Toad. It's so cute. Oh my God, it's talking in full sentences. That's just the coolest thing ever. So inside of Toadstool Cafe, I decided to get the Power Up Marinara, which is spaghetti meatballs with these crispy crackers on. It comes with a wafer coin and what's cool is that this can either be an oreo or a white chocolate wafer so you don't know until you open it and then i got garlic nuts and i love the plate that it's on so that was crazy they just evacuated toadstool cafe and we saw the fire marshal coming they also evacuated all of the people who worked in toadstool cafe they evacuated mario kart as well so right now i'm waiting outside to go on mario kart one last time today i know i've been on it a lot but i kind of have to do it one more time then i'll go and i'll look at construction throughout the rest of the park. But again, Mario Kart is so fun. So I ended up doing Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge just one more time, which was super fun. I did it with people who really knew what they were doing. So we all got really high scores, which was great. And I'm leaving the land right now with the highest score of the day, which is pretty fun. We have a lot more construction to look at. I know this was supposed to be a construction update and it ended up just being me at Super Nintendo World. But that being said, I will definitely be back. If not, when they open for technical rehearsals, definitely for the AP preview soon. So we're gonna head out here to the warp pipe. So we just came out of there. Now we do have one update here at the character shop, which is inside. They've started selling the power up band. So you don't need to enter the land to get them. So even though it is looking pretty crazy here, the wait times in the park are not that bad. Let's take a look at the wait times. And here the studio directory, Forbidden Journeys a 15 minute wait, Ollivander's five, Studio Tour 10, Secret Life Pets 10, Despicable Me 15, Simpsons Ride 25, Kung Fu Band at 10, Jurassic World 10, Transformers 30, Revenge of the Mummy is 15, and Waterworld is the only live show in the park. Super Nintendo World open for technical rehearsals. When I was in there, Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge was showing an hour wait. That being said, we still have a couple more things to check out on the upper lot, so let's teleport there to see what's going on. 
and we made it to the upper lot and look what's right behind me. It is the special effects stage and it's closed. In fact, we have an authorized personal only sign right out front and we can see inside the building just a little bit. It's pretty dark and you can see the bleachers are still there. It doesn't appear as though they've removed anything, at least not yet. And the front of the show is blocked off as well. The special effects stage has been here for quite some time. It's stage 56. It used to be home to so many different shows and it's at, it's, it's done. This is it. And of course, we will definitely be back in the future to check out its demolition. But one thing we will not be back in the future to check on is Production Central, which closes today. Today's the last day of operation for Production Central, which is right underneath Animal Actors. So let's take one last look around the store, which seems to house all of Universal's legacy properties from Universal Monsters, Back to the Future, E.T., Jaws, and lots of other things. This is a great store, and it's also home to Halloween Horror Nights, starring Horror Nights. So saying a final goodbye to the Production Central location, Goodbye. Another thing that's going away is Grinchmas, which is in the Universal Plaza. Here's a look at the back of it, and we'll look at the front of it in a little bit. Going to take a quick turn here into the former smoking section to check on Super Nintendo World just a little bit. And boy, is it fantastic to see people in the land for the first time in the queue for Mario Kart to know everything that's here and to have spent all this time I have in the land. But it's not just Super Nintendo World that we're looking at here. We also have to look at the former commissary area, which we actually do get a little bit of a view from, from the Mario Kart queue. Nothing to be able to see other than it's just being fleshed out. A lot of work being done to that first floor though. Same with the creative campus over here. And it looks like there's a lot of work being done on the inside too, on staircases and supports. And every time I leave the former smoking section, I do have to say, do not smoke, it kills you. Over here in Pet's Place, it looks like Gru is doing a meet and greet. And coming around this side of the plaza, there's a lot of work lights up and construction cranes. There's, I see a, a forklift and a crane out right now. So I'm wondering if this is more than just Grinchmas that they're doing here because Lunar New Year starts soon and usually Lunar New Year is inside the plaza. And speaking of Lunar New Year, the Hollywood and Dime location has been all decked out for Lunar New Year, although they haven't started selling any specialty food or beverage options just yet. So all this talk about Lunar New Year is getting me really excited for what's to come. So thanks so much for watching this one. I'll see you guys in the next one.